Hello, everyone. It's thrilled to be here at Allegiant Stadium. And I want to start off by thanking Las Vegas CVA, MGM, and the Raiders organization. I'd also like to thank Totino's for partnering with us on Media Day. We have over 500 media members here. And I want to thank you, each and every one of you, for your continued support. But most importantly, for your great and fair coverage over the last year. I also want to thank our great media partners, ESPN and Fox, for their partnership. Almost two years ago, they bet on the Big 12, and I assured them we would deliver, and we will. EA Sports is also here, and they will give our student athletes early access to College Football 25. I'd also like to thank Microsoft for being here, and we'll talk a bit about that in a little bit. And lastly, I've got to thank my great staff. Uh, they have worked tirelessly in moving this event here, uh, led by Scott Draper, and I want to thank all of you for your hard work, your diligence, and for putting on a world-class event. This is our first media day as a 16-team league. There has never been a better time than right now to be part of the Big 12. We are truly a national conference in 10 states, four time zones, and all eyes are now on the Big 12 for all the right reasons. And I think it's safe to say we are more relevant now than ever before. Before I look forward, I'd like to recap where we've been for the last 12 months. Since our last football media day, we added the four corners and solidified ourselves as one of the top three conferences in America. All four schools are here with us today, and you will hear from them over the next few days. I'm incredibly excited about what they bring to our league. Last season, Big 12 football fans packed the stadiums. Six Big 12 teams averaged 100% in home capacity. All schools averaged over 88% capacity. There was incredible late season excitement heading into the Big 12 championship weekend. During our football championship, we introduced the first ever halftime show with Nelly, featuring our school bands. I think that was a great example of how you infuse the old with the new. And our ratings peaked at halftime and we brought in a more casual audience to experience that halftime show. We had a record tying nine teams in bowl games, and we had the second best win percentage. We saw success across Olympic sports and basketball too. Men's basketball had a record high eight teams in the NCAA tournament. Women's basketball had seven teams in the tournament, in fact, the most since 2013. Six NCAA titles were won in sports such as cross country, tennis, and track, to name a few. What led to our success on the field was, of course, our incredible student athletes. And speaking of our student athletes, I have the privilege today of recognizing this year's Bob Bowlesby Award winners, given to student athletes who competed at the highest levels, both on and off the field, this past year. Our first winner is Bella Foligno from BYU women's soccer team. Let's give her a hand, please. Our second winner is David Carr from Iowa State Wrestling. Bella and David exemplify what it means to be a Big 12 student athlete. And on behalf of the Big 12 community, I'd like to congratulate them both. Off the field, 2024 was a success as well. Our sponsorship business grew by 79%. Our ticket business grew 23%. To start the year, we launched a partnership with Allstate focused on Big 12 women's sports. We celebrated last year's four editions with Big 12 homecoming events partner with a partnership with Sports Illustrated. And we'll do it again this year with our new editions. We launched the first ever student athlete health and well-being advisory group. 
We celebrated cultural moments, including a basketball partnership with the Muhammad Ali estate for Black History Month, supported by ESPN. In addition to moving this year's media day to Las Vegas, we doubled down on Kansas City as the site of our basketball championships for years to come, as well as added women's soccer. We continue to plant our flag in Dallas by extending our football championship at AT&T Stadium and Globe Life Stadium for, foot, for, for baseball. We launched a PSL program around our men's basketball championship with our partner legends, and we teamed up with the NFL to launch Big 12 Pro Day. And we will continue to build our partnership with the NFL as we as a conference continue to innovate and grow. When I took this position, I said, I wanted to make sure our conference was on the consciousness of current and future student athletes. In an effort to do so, we needed to be more active on social media. We are now the second most followed conference on Twitter and Instagram. And in fact, have had over 250,000 follower growth since December of 2022. It was certainly a great year, both on and off the field, for the Big 12. But I often say, I'm happy, but not satisfied. People keep asking, what's next? Our newest brand spot answers that. We are. Let's take a look. Everything you thought you knew is brand new. We on the new See when the game changes, so do we. we. Every day, every play. Always been greater than 12. Now standing 16 strong. Oh, In every end zone. Any time zone. Any time. When everyone else keeps asking, what's next? What's next? We know that <laughs> we are. So as you can tell, 2024-25 will be a very exciting year for the Big 12. On the football front, we will be the deepest conference in America. Every week will matter. I'm going to say that one more time. We will be the deepest conference in America, and every week will matter. We have star power and parity. We boast some of the top players and coaches in the game. November will be incredibly exciting, and we will brand it as a race to the championship. Beyond football, the best conference in basketball got better. Our Olympic sports got stronger, adding four programs with an incredible history of excellence. We recently made some changes across our competition team. Our Olympic sports leadership team is one of the best in the country. Scott Draper is now overseeing all Olympic sports in addition to his role managing football. Dana Scherf will oversee women's basketball. It's the first time we've ever had anyone in that role. And given the growth of the game, we needed to double down. We hired Lisa Peterson from the Pac-12 as our new VP of Olympic sports. Student athlete support continues to be at the forefront of what we do. We have over 70 current and former student athletes participating in this year's Olympic and Paralympic Games. And I plan on being in Paris to support them all. This year, we'll see Big 12 create new opportunities for our student athletes on and off the field. Last week, we launched the Big 12 Beyond Borders program, a cultural studies and leadership program for our student athletes. We will introduce a new governance group to give a greater voice to student athletes. In fact, we took that idea from the Pac-12. The league will assist schools with student athlete storytelling to help build their brands. We will introduce original student athlete storytelling content this year, named 12 for 12. We will also continue to work with the NCA to protect our student athletes from the negatives that come with sports best betting, especially prop bets. Lastly, I am thrilled to announce the launch of the Big 12 Alumni Council. The Big 12 has produced some incredible talent 
over the years, both on and off the field. This council will provide a former student athlete perspective for the league as we continue to grow. And we will officially announce all the members of the council tomorrow. Clark Williams and I will be chairing this council and we are thrilled to do so. As I think about our commercial business, our top priority is growth and creating value for our member institutions. I often refer to our league as a mature startup. This means our brand can be younger, more progressive and innovative compared to some of our peers. Our value creation must be done in a strategic way and that value creation starts with ESPN and Fox. We are taking an innovative approach, exploring new TV windows and giving fans more access to our programming. As we build our brand, we will continue to build our business. We will not stumble into this new era following settlement. In fact, we will be aggressive and very proactive. We will push at the NCA level. In fact, I love what they recently did with on-field logos. I've been very vocal with the NCA to push for making commercial patches permissible for officials' uniforms, similar to what the NBA has done. I've spoken to our football officials and they are in favor of it. And I'm optimistic this will happen soon. From a conference perspective, we are exploring all options. Two years later, I guess you could say, we're still open for business. Naming rights is one, private equity is another. We are looking to expand our PSL program into our football championship game for 2025. We will be infusing more LED signage across our marquee championship events creating new visible signage and revenue streams for our member institutions. Today, I'd like to announce officially that we are partnering with Microsoft for tablets on the field and in the coaching booth for the upcoming football season. We continue to explore Mexico for the Big 12. We are currently looking into pivoting Big 12 Mexico towards women's soccer or baseball for our official launch. As we continue to enhance our commercial portfolio and our narrative, this morning we launched a conference branded channel through our new partnership with TuneIn Radio. And I wanna thank the executives that are here today from TuneIn. Our football coverage will be greater than ever before thanks to this new partnership with TuneIn Radio. Additionally, we anticipate announcing a fast channel platform in the near future to also enhance and broaden our narrative. Both give us an opportunity to extend our reach. Obviously, I'm very passionate about where we've been and where we're going, but I'd be remiss if I didn't touch base on the current state of affairs in our industry. We're going through change, but I would rather call it a necessary reset. In 10 years, I think we look back at this period as a positive moment in collegiate athletics history. I live my life by the value equation. Those that create value deserve to be rewarded. I speak for many when I say enhanced student athlete benefits are a good thing. And that's what the recently announced settlement will provide. I've spent a lot of time with our P4 peers and Charlie Baker developing our path forward. It's been a cooperative effort and I want to thank them for their partnership. There still is a lot of work to be done. We will work to get clarity on things like Title IX, roster limits, and enforcements. Settlement will require continued conversations on the Hill so we can codify the settlement agreement and gain clarity on student-athlete employment. I've had a lot of conversations with student athletes about what their desired goals are. And certainly enhanced benefits are at the top of the list, which we are addressing. As we enter this new chapter, I can assure you, Big 12 schools will compete 
at the highest levels and they will continue to invest. We've been preparing for this moment for a long time. And as commissioner, I will continue to create value for our members in order for them to be as competitive as possible. This is no time to press pause. We must continue to be bold and aggressive as an industry. The Big 12 will always be ambitious because that's who we are. I know there's a lot of pressure on a lot of people right now, but I will leave you with this. Pressure is a privilege. Before I let you go, I wanna bring someone who's very special up on the stage to join me. Joni, who many of you know, has been with the Big 12 for over 26 years, and she will be retiring after this week. We wish her only wonderful things in the next chapter in her journey, and I'd like Joni, Joni, there she is, I'd like all of you to please stand up and give Joni a round of applause as we thank for her for all her service and her dedication to the Big 12. Thank you, Joni. Thank you. It's been great. Thank you very much, everyone. With that, the floor is now open for questions. To ask a question, please raise your hand, wait for the mic holder to come to you and stand. And when you ask your question, please identify yourself and your affiliation. Right here, front center. Commissioner Yormark, thank you for your comments. Um, your last comment triggered a thought as we move into this new era of, of paid college athletes. With that, a lot of the discussion revolves around the NFL model and a salary cap. Do you envision student athletes unionizing so that they're exempt from antitrust and you are exempt from antitrust, therefore creating a salary cap? Okay, I, it's a great question. What is your name again? Kevin Turner, Sun Devil Radio Network. Okay, great. Thank you for the question. Uh, we have not discussed a salary cap. Um, I think settlement provides a very crystal clear future and path forward uh, for our industry. It provides incredibly enhanced benefits for our student athletes. And as I said during my comments, um, that's what they want. And uh, that's what settlement delivers. I appreciate your question, though. Thank you. Hello. Oh, there we go. Yep. Tyler Budge, CF Budge. Uh, 14 Tyler, team, nice to see you today. Thank you. 14-team uh, playoff has been something that's been talked about a lot as it was agreed to start in 2026. And it was surfaced in this offseason that the SEC and Big Ten are talking about making those two first-round buys exclusive to the SEC and Big Ten. What are your thoughts on that sort of proposed model, and what would be your hopes to happen going forward? Well, listen, you know, we've got Richard Clark here today, the new executive director of CFP, so feel free to ask him any questions. From my perspective, we're just getting into this new format of 12 schools. And we've got to see how that works. And we're very excited about what that new format looks like. Obviously, the Big 12 will be represented um, by one team at least, possibly more, probably more. Uh, and we'll, see, have to, we'll have to see how it unfolds. Um, but from my perspective, anything beyond this year is just speculation. Let's get this year right. We've, we're, we're all blessed to have games on campus in that first round. Uh, I'm looking forward to it, and uh, we'll see where it takes us moving forward. But thank you for your question. Section three on the end. Barry Trammell, Tulsa World. Barry, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Good. Um, in, connected to the previous question, two conferences have sort of flexed their muscles and made a lot of, uh, in, uh, not decisions, but clues that they're really trying a power play. What is the Big 12 doing in response to that? Barry, I wake up every morning, I think about one thing. The Big 12 being the best version of itself. Everything else doesn't really matter. And if we take care of business, we're going to be just fine. Uh, and I'm a firm believer in that. As I said earlier, we're more relevant now than we've ever been. Um, we're a national conference. We've got 16 great brands. 
We're going to be the deepest football conference in America. We'll be re well represented in the CFP. Um, everything else is just speculation. Um, I'm, I'm really, really focused on just making sure the Big 12 is the best version of itself. And not only have we had a great 24 months, but we continue to get better. But thank you for your question. Here's center up front. Uh, Kenneth Barry, Touchdowns and Tangents Media. Kenneth, how are you today? Excellent. Thank you, Commissioner. Are you enjoying um, being in Vegas? Always. It's way too hot, though. Yeah, I, uh, I would agree. Um, in regards to the way you've managed to capitalize off, let's be honest, the choices that the Pac-12 made and didn't make, um, how are you working on becoming a bigger um, power figure in the West Coast now that, you know, that conference is officially gone? And have you worked with the WWE in regards to their NIL program because they've they've had like the Cavalier twins and they've worked with TCU and other people in regards to that. So we've got a great relationship with with WWE um, and and excited to continue to expand that um, as it relates to the West Coast. I mean, this is a great example. It's indicative of our appetite to move a little west with some of our ten pole events. Um, being in Vegas is critically important to us, even before last year's realignment. I said that we had to be in Vegas. Uh, and a little bit more west. I mean, this is the entertainment and sports capital of the world right now. So being here is critically important for our brand and our business. And we'll continue to explore opportunities to take some of our tentpole events, our champion events, more to the west coast if the opportunity presents itself and if it makes sense. Thank you for your question. Back center. Henry Greenstein, Lawrence Journal World. Uh, with the permissive cap for revenue sharing that's being laid out in the House settlement, some schools, including in the Big 12, have already said they'll revenue share at the maximum possible level. My question is, how quickly will Big 12 schools need to get to that maximum for the conference to be as competitive as possible? Well, I'm going to leave it up to the schools to dictate that pace, but I can tell you that, as I said in my opening comments, we as a conference which means our 16 member institutions are going to continue to compete at the highest levels and will continue to invest in the areas that we need to in order to do so. Uh, very confident about how we're going to spend and invest over the coming years. And, uh, but obviously, to the pace at which it, it moves, I'll leave that up to the schools. Hey, Sean, Gerard from CBS Sports. How are you doing? Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. So you mentioned private equity as part of your opening statement. So I'm curious, one, what does a model look like in college sports that makes sense? And two, how does the Big 12 kind of uh, work with private equity in a way that doesn't create major long-term liabilities, especially? I'm not going to get into too much of a conversation on private equity. But as I said earlier, we're exploring all options. I do believe that given where we are, the industry, having a capital resource as a partner makes a ton of sense. That's really how, how you conduct good business. I really believe that. And if you see where private equity is, is kind of making a path into professional sports, at some point in time, it's going to come here in, in, into collegiate athletics. So we are exploring what that might look like. And a structure and a model of what that looks like is going to be credit critically important so that we're not compromising the long-term future of the conference. And we have surrounded ourselves with subject matter experts as we vet out the possibilities. And whatever we do is going to have to benefit the conference both short-term and long-term, uh, long provide optionality for our schools. Um, and um, we're not there yet, um, but we are exploring the different options and the different structures that best suit our conference and our schools. Thank you for your question. We'll stay in the same row in the center. Good morning, Commissioner. How are Jerry. you? How you doing today? All right, just fine. Good. Jerry Lee Woodley, Jr., the College Sports Report. When you took over the, con the conference, you mentioned day one, building partnerships. Are the partnerships moving at a pace that you are Happy with, or are they not moving fast enough? You're talking about just generally? Yes. I, I, listen, we're moving at a great speed. Um, when I got here, people warned me uh, prematurely 
that things in collegiate athletics doesn't move, they don't move that fast. I can assure you working with our ADs and our board, at least in the Big 12, that hasn't been the case. If you think about what we've been able to accomplish over the last 24 months, it's been incredible. And I, I tip my cap to our ADs and our board um, for wanting to be positively disruptive, to want to break, wanting to break boundaries, create new partnerships that could create value for the conference, both short and long term. So we're moving at a great pace right now, um, excited about all the things that are in front of us. And uh, as I said earlier, we can't pause. We've got to continue to be bold and aggressive, but thoughtful at the same time. Hey, Commissioner, how are you doing? Parker Reem from Fox 44 in Waco. Nice to see you. Good to see you, too. Uh, you mentioned a lot about the future of this conference, and obviously this is the first year in a while that Texas and Oklahoma have not been here. Uh, what do you think the four brands that you added this year kind of do to make up for that difference and just kind of the outlook for the future of this conference as a whole? I've, I've been saying it for a year now, but, you know, the, the four corners was the 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 a scenario for us when we thought about realignment big brands great markets engaged fan bases um, both academic ex excellence and athletic excellence and as I said earlier we got deeper and better in football we got deeper and better in basketball and we got deeper and better in Olympic sports so it's been a win for this conference and I'm thrilled and excited uh, on August 2 to officially Welcome the Four Corners. Oh, as I said, they're here today, obviously. And uh, I think we're in for something pretty special as a conference. I really do. Thank you for your question. Section three there in the middle. There. Here? Right there. Bryce. Bryce Cherry, Wake Go Trib. Bryce, uh, how are you Commissioner, today? you talked about bringing some of the tent pole events out west, and you talked about going to Mexico for soccer and that kind of thing. Uh, so my question is, do geography and convenience still matter in, in terms of travel budgets and that kind of thing? No, convenience matters. Uh, it certainly does. And that goes into the consideration set as we're exploring different options. Uh, as I said earlier, it's got to make sense for membership. Um, I think coming to Vegas for this event was critically important. Um, unfortunately, there was a scheduling conflict at AT&T. And we wanted to provide a great experience, not only for the media, but our student athletes. And I can assure you, I've been stopped at least a dozen times this morning by student athletes saying, thank you for getting me to Vegas. And in many respects, it's their first time here. Um, so that's part of the puzzle also. Um, that's part of what we have to deliver, a great cultural experience for our student athletes. And we're doing that here during Media Day. And we'll be very thoughtful about the future and making sure that we're not inconveniencing people. But there is a benefit to doing different things. And we have to embrace change. But thank you for your question. Outer aisle on the end. Hi. <clears throat> Over here, Todd Lebo, Sports Radio 810, Kansas City. Hey, Todd. How are you doing? Good. So, you made the point that you felt the Big 12 was the deepest football conference in America. You made the point twice. I'm, I'm sure that'll make some waves in the SEC country. I wonder if you could just maybe get a little deeper into why you feel this league is the deepest football league in America this year. Well, I think there's a lot of parity. Uh, we've got 16 great coaches. We've got a lot of star power. You know, when you think about the quarterbacks, you think about the running backs. Um, Many of our programs have been building over the last couple of years. So I, I think it's only natural and appropriate for us to think that way right now. Uh, we were a very deep conference last year, but we got deeper, now with the four corner schools. So I'm expecting great things from our schools this year. Uh, I think last year we underperformed a little bit, candidly. Um, I don't expect that to be the case this year. Every week will matter, and as I said earlier, November, we will brand the month as a race to a championship because I think it's gonna be really tight this year and it will take until towards the end of the season for us to determine who will show up at AT&T Stadium for that championship game. Thank you for your question. Commissioner Trey Strilko, Sons of UCF. Earlier you spoke about 16 strong brands. Is there any number that's too big for a conference in terms of its membership? You know, I haven't really thought about that. I often get asked about expansion and what's next. 
uh, I'm really focused on the current composition of our conference. Um, we've expanded a lot. I, my wife told me the other day, when you took the job, you had 10 schools, you have 16 now. And that's in a very short period of time in less than 24 months. So we've got to make sure that as a collective group, we're reaching our potential. Um, so I haven't really thought about what's the right number. Um, I don't know if it's really about a number. I think it's about the right fit. It's about the value a potential school might or might not bring, into the, you know, bring to the conference. Uh, but right now we're focused on 16. We're focused on getting this right. And I'm really excited about our future as a 16-team league. Section three toward the outside. Hey, Brett. Chris Williams with Cyclone Fanatic. Nice to see you. Good to see you. I was curious with uh, the state of Big 12 basketball and the news with the Big East, new television package. What does that mean going forward? I know you have a deal with ESPN and Fox for a while, but as far as the future with the potential of a basketball-only television deal? Well, first of all, as I mentioned earlier in my comments, we got stronger at basketball. As good as we were, we got stronger. Um, that being said, when we did our new TV deal, um, we gave ourselves optionality to think about the next cycle. And we'll be back in the market in January of 30. And we have a lot of optionality. Do we go back into the market as we've historically done? Or do we bifurcate football from basketball? Only time will tell. But I'm bullish on the whole deal. I'm bullish on football, I'm bullish on basketball, I'm bullish on Olympic sports, and everything we do now sets the tone for that moment in January of 30. And with the help of ESPN and Fox, they will hope they will grow our brands and they will grow our narrative and best position ourselves for that moment. Thank you for your question. Section three in the middle. Tyler Waldrop, Tulsa World. Tyler, how are you doing today? Doing well, thank you. Good. Um, you mentioned you expect we'll look back in 10 years at this period of change as a positive one for college athletics. Do you have a sense of how long the college athletics scene might be in this fluctuation? And do you have certain priorities, certain questions you would like to be answered, whether that's Title IX or, or other issues that are maybe priorities for you? I know there's a lot of questions right now. Well, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, Title IX, uh, what enforcement looks like, roster limits, those are all things that we're vetting out um, myself and you know, my Power Four commissioner colleagues. Um, so there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but I do think settlement provide a lot of clarity going forward. Um, and we needed clarity. And we needed to understand what the path forward was going to look like, and I think we have that now. That being said, there's still a lot to work out and crystallize, um, but I'm excited about the future. And I'm excited about how our schools are gonna embrace the future and invest in student athletes and invest in their programs so that we can be the best version of ourselves. So hopefully that helps you with your, um, with your question and thanks for being here, by the way. Mitch Harper, KSL Sports, KSL News Radio. Uh, Brett, you noted in your opening remarks that value creation begins with ESPN and Fox and you're exploring new TV windows what do those windows look like, and how is ESPN and Fox helping shape the narrative of the league? Listen, all I can say on that is that we, you know, Saturdays, there's a lot going on on Saturdays, as we all know, a lot of competition. So the question is, are there new TV windows we can explore uh, where we can highlight, elevate, and amplify our football programs uh, maybe a little differently? And we're exploring that. Uh, there's nothing that we have vetted out specifically that I want to discuss just right now. Um, but we're working at it, and we'll see where it takes us. But we've got to kick the tires and, and figure out other, other windows that make sense and provide great engagement for our fans uh, and great exposure for our programs. And, and it's incumbent upon me to, to explore it, which I'm doing. All right, three quarters of the way back in the center. Morning, Brett. Willie Ramirez with the Associated Press. Okay. Willie, where are you? Oh, there you are, Willie. Nice to see you. You mentioned Las Vegas a couple of times in your comments, and I'm just curious, 
the uh, current Las Vegas Bowl status is now with the SEC and Big Ten. The Pac-12 was previously affiliated with it. Utah is just named to the 2027 Vegas Kickoff Classic. The committee that puts those two games on has done a phenomenal job since it's grown and continued to progress now here at Allegiant. What are the talks on ongoing, and are you looking forward to possibly being affiliated on an annual basis with the Las Vegas Bowl? I'm confident at the right time we will have a formal affiliation with the Las Vegas Bowl. This market is critically important. Scott Draper is working on that. But I'm very comfortable and confident in what that outcome will, will bring for our conference. We need to be here in Vegas for all the right reasons. I said it earlier, entertainment and sports capital of the world. Um, so critically important market for us in the future. Uh, Federico Moreno, KU Student Radio. How's it going, Commissioner? Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. So these initiatives that you've taken to grow the brand internationally outside of the United States have been something historic. But what can you encourage the schools to do individually to help grow themselves outside of the United States as well? Well, I mean, listen, we're working on that all the time. Uh, as I've said before, Mexico and, and Mexico City specifically are very important for us. And um, we as a conference realize the benefit that having a presence there makes and why it makes sense. And we're going to lean in probably to, to launch that platform with women's soccer and or baseball. Ireland, as you know, there was an announcement where two of our schools are going to be playing there next August. So we get some exposure in, in that part of the world. And who knows what comes after that. But I do think we want to glamorize and elevate and amplify our brand both domestically and internationally for all the right reasons. Not only just for student athlete recruitment, but just enrollment for our, for our member institutions. Critically important for us. All right, yep. about three quarters of the way in the back. Hi, Brett. Alex Blackburn, College Football Dogs. Um, you mentioned the focus on the 16 teams here that are here now. How important is the cohesion among those ADs and the unity to the overall future of the conference? I think it's critically important. Um, we have a like-minded group, which I think is, is paramount. Um, and our, our ADs like each other. They compete, but they like each other, which, which is perfectly fine. Um, you can compete and lean on your colleagues for advice and guidance. And I see that uh, from, from my perspective. There's great rapport amongst our ADs. It's a great fit. Uh, I'm blessed to be working with each and every one of them. Uh, I think continuity makes a lot of sense amongst the ADs. And I'm hoping that that, that you know, presents itself over the short and long term. But we got a great group of ADs and they're working hard to, hard to build the Big 12, our brand, our business. Um, and I'm excited to be working with each and every one of them. Hi, uh, James Techley, anti White Right Sun. Commissioner, you talked about uh, having a pro day with the NFL, a conference wide pro day. Have you given any thought to having a type of a combine for high, potential high school recruits for Big 12 schools, kind of highlight the conference and also give some exposure to high school athletes, particularly football players? I haven't addressed the high school combine or anything like that, and I would defer to my head of football, Scott Draper, on that. I will say that we had a wonderful experience uh, at Big 12 Pro Day in, in, in the partnership with the NFL. It was something that we had thought about for quite some time, and it finally came to fruition. It was a great experience you know, for those student athletes, and we will be doing it again this year as well with the NFL. Uh, so we're excited about that. Okay, we've got time for two more questions. We'll go here, and then we'll go over there in the middle. Hey, Commissioner. Uh, Nick Hamilton, Nightcast Media. How are you? How are you? Uh, you talked about branding and, and the importance of branding. You talked about social media. Obviously, College Football 25 is due to be out, and that's going to give more exposure. But what are some of the other ways you feel like you can have a strong, solid brand for the Big 12 to be able to be in the conversations like we talk about the SEC and the Big 10 and so forth? Well, I mean, I think it, and I spoke to it earlier, Working with ESPN and, and Fox is critically important for us as they elevate and amplify and they storytell and create the right narrative. Uh, our partnership with TuneIn gives us greater relevance and a greater narrative than we've ever had before. We're exploring a fast channel. 
um, doubling down on social media and engaging with current and, student and, and future student athletes in places where they are critically important. You know, this conference had a, had a CMO. Uh, we've got a CMO here for the first time, first time in 26 years. And uh, he's doing an incredible job, Tyrell, many of you know him, uh, in building our brand so we can build our business behind it. And as I said earlier, we are more relevant today than we've ever been in our history. And a lot of that is because we're building our brand. Thank you for your question. All right, last question. Hi, yes, Richard Obey, Playmakers KU. So in your opening remarks, you mentioned the fusion of old and new, and you haven't really spoken about that in any of these questions. So what does that look like, and how are you going to continue to fuse the old generations and the new generations coming forward? Well, I think we've done a lot of that so far in our first 24 months. If you think about how we're using music to tell our story and how we've infused that and contemporized our championship events and did a halftime show, obviously a great example of you know, taking a little bit of the old and having that marry with the new. I mean, people were concerned what were going to happen to the school bands if we did a halftime show. And we found a performer, Nelly, one of the, one of the best there is, that wanted to choreograph that halftime with our student bands. And it made for a wonderful experience for them. And you'll see us do more and more of that moving forward. Uh, but I think it's a balancing act. You know, we, we can't, can't do away with the legacy and the heritage of where we've come from. But we have to modernize, we have to contemporize, and I think there's a way to stitch the two together. And we've shown how that can be, be done successfully and we'll continue to do that moving forward. Thank you for your question.